all this stemmed from a particular series of conversations I had in 2021, where I get told about a massive corporate conspiracy. And I thought to myself, well, surely this can't be true because what, the, what I was told was just so egregious. I thought to myself, it's just too mind-blowing to even exist in, in terms of Australia. So, so, so basically dropping uh, everything that I was doing, I, I turned away from being a economist and a precious metals commentator to then actually saying, well, I'm going to actually become an investigator. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and this is the Miles Franklin Weekly Special for June 6th through June 13th, 2023, while supplies last. This week we feature the 2023 quarter ounce Noah's Ark silver coins at $3.25 over melt per coin, and Ital Preziosi 10 ounce silver bars at just $3.49 over spot per ounce. Minted by the famed Geiger Mint in Germany, the quarter ounce Noah's Ark silver coins are sovereign coins of Armenia, with a face value of 100 dram, and a great way to get fractional silver for a significantly lower premium than you would normally pay. Next, our Ital Preziosi 10 ounce silver bars not only maintain a great level of liquidity, but also boast one of our lowest premiums in several months, at $3.49 over spot per ounce. They come individually numbered, are available in any quantity, and come 50 to a box. Our specials this week are IRA eligible. And if you'd like to learn more about a precious metals IRA, call us and we'll be happy to help you in that process. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends and we look forward to speaking with you. Welcome back to Liberty and Finance. We're delighted to have this returning guest whom we haven't had on for some time, John Adams, who has been a outspoken champion of the people and has just launched a new website called publiccrusader.com. We're going to be hearing more about that. He's uh, been outspoken because he's stood up in many cases where the interests of the people have not been served and there's been all kinds of uh, corporate overreach, sometimes the potential for governmental corruption. He's here to give us an update on a major investigation he's been spearheading for the past year plus. And he's also an economist in Australia. He joins us again today, this Friday, June 2nd, 2023. John, thanks for coming back on Liberty and Finance. Thank you, Donegan. It's been quite a while. um, And I've always considered you to be a close friend. So it's definitely good to be back. We're grateful for your presence here always. We always get a lot of uh, viewer accolades for your courage and your tenacity in the face of uh, basically just standing up for the for the rights of the people. And um, if we could get an update from you, you have you had launched a major investigation against potentially uh, a significant corruption, uh, corporate corruption, and then uh, even that under... Uh, you unearthed uh, potential corruption or failure failure of duty on the part of the of the prosecutors and the, and the, those who are supposed to be investigating on the behalf of the people. And you've engaged both uh, uh, congressional, I guess we'd call it parliamentary support there in Australia, as well as uh, media support. Can you bring us an update on this? This what could be maybe one of the biggest scandals in modern history that that you've been working at breaking open there in Australia and give us an update on the progress you've been making in those in those areas. Sure, sure. So, so yeah, I mean, uh, uh, in terms of uh, I guess some of our discussions, Donegan. I mean, you and I uh, started first talking about economics. Uh, I think back in 2019, and we obviously started talking in terms of gold and silver and all of this sort of stuff. But I have to say, the last couple of years has my life has can take in a completely different journey um, compared to what you and I used to do. And so all this stemmed from a uh, particular series of conversations I had in 2021, where I get told about a massive corporate conspiracy um, that really intrigued uh, and piqued my interest. And I thought to myself, well, surely this can't be true because what the what I was told was just so egregious. I thought to myself, it's just too... Uh, mind-blowing to even exist in in terms of Australia. So 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 basically, dropping uh, everything that I was doing, I I turned away from being a economist and a precious metals commentator to to then actually saying, well, I'm going to actually become an investigator. And so, 
during the course of uh, 2021 and early 2022, um, so I spent nine months and fifty thousand dollars self-funded of pursuing my own criminal investigation um, and trying to piece together whether this conspiracy that I was told is a true or is a false. And so, what I ended up uh, doing was, on the sixth of April last year, I went to the Australian Securities Investments Commission, which is Australia's equivalent to the SEC. And I basically submitted a 600-page investigation file signed by uh, my legal counsel. And I said to the government, um, this is this is a massive fraud. I've uh, been able to crack the case. Um, I, I want the government to establish an official criminal investigation and actually um, get to the bottom of what's really happening in, in, in terms of Australia. And if uh, you know charges can be laid, um, I want those charges to be brought and I want the country and the economy to be cleaned up because one of the important um, issues, Dunnigan, that I think um, it'd be interesting to get your perspective on this is, uh, you know, what you and I have historically done is we talk about market analysis, we talk about price, we talk about how how do we can, how do we make money, how do we protect ourselves um, in terms of from um, um, uh, you know in terms of adverse economic forces, etc. But 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 the, but the one thing that I think we haven't really touched on is, um, particularly when it comes to certain types of assets, what's the point of talking about the market and how to make money in the market if if you ha- uh, uh, if you are a victim of fraud? Because you can have a balance sheet on paper and you can say, hey, I'm worth two billion dollars, but if those assets are not real. And if someone has stolen the money behind your back, um, market analysis is pretty much irrelevant. So, 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 so this issue of being sure that assets do exist, um, I mean, that's a very a profound concept. Um, and, and so, you know, so that's why even though people like you and me are free market uh, capitalists um, and we believe in sort of the libertarian mindset, uh, there's still a role for government, particularly around. Um, you know, the you know, in terms of uh, exposing fraud and ensuring that markets are true and honest, and so, so that's what sort of, so that, so that's what sort of piqued my interest in this whole um, situation. And so, so when I got to uh, ASIC in April of last year, uh, they took about two and a half months to go through my file. Multiple people at the regulator. Uh, 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 they read it. They 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 tested the veracity of the material, and then by July of last year, they commenced a criminal investigation. Um, and uh, and so only in the last week did I receive a letter resulting from a freedom of information request. And this is the fourth time in in the last ten months where uh, ASIC has confirmed the investigation is ongoing. So so do I know what the truth is? Um, do I know whether? My set of allegations have, uh, you know, whether they can be proven in a court of law. Um, have we been able to apprehend the people who I think are the bad guys? Um, that that is still yet to be determined, and we're obviously awaiting to see what happens. Now, the one thing that I'm very conscious of, Dunnigan, is particularly as I've spoken to you and a whole bunch of other people uh, across the world uh, in the last few years uh, about. Uh, economics and markets, etc., is um, there has been an issue with the regulators and law enforcement, and we can talk about Hunter Biden and the FBI's inability to uh, uh, lay charges against Hunter Biden for clear breaches of the law. Um, but but whether it's that or you know um, the SEC uh, or the CFTC, etc., um, there has been an issue around the world of getting law enforcement to do their job, particularly in instances where there may be commercial or political motivations not to pursue certain companies or to pursue certain charges. And so I was very conscious that um, there could be a risk here. Uh, But also um, what I was able to discover in terms of ASIC is their capacity or their willingness to commence an investigation um, is extraordinarily low. And so uh, what I decided to do after I went to uh, ASIC with my um, 608-page uh, file of evidence, I said to myself, well, I was able to achieve investigation. It took me a lot of time and money, and I had to, you know, it took me quite a bit of time to actually 
put the right team together. And I thought to myself, what's the chances of the average mum and dad investor to be able to replicate what I did? And the and and the and the and the answer is basically zero. It is near impossible for the average Australian to to trigger a criminal investigation. Um, and so I thought to myself, well, one, the system should be easier for citizens to be able to access financial justice. But two, given my concerns about uh, that that uh, the regulators may, may not be willing to do their job in the face of what I've uncovered, I thought to myself, well, I need to uh, expose uh, the poor performance of ASIC. And so I wrote a report in August and September of last year. I publicly released it on the 6th of October uh, 2022. It was covered by the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, which is our public broadcaster, as well as another uh, major online website called news.com.au. And basically, I said that the regulators' performance in, in handling reports of alleged misconduct extraordinarily poor. And over the last 11 years, it's been getting a lot worse, um, even though I've got more resources and more people. Um, and I said I want a parliamentary inquiry into effectively the cops. So ASICs, in my mind, are, are the financial police. And so by the 27th of October, the Parliament of Australia established not one inquiry, two inquiries into ASIC. And so since October, uh, we've had this process of people across the country who have had major problems with the regulator. They've put in submissions. There's about 160 submissions, and, and I, I know that there are some additional submissions coming this month, um, uh, and, and 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 so as we go into the second half of 2023, there's going to be at least five or six days of public hearings where various witnesses will be coming forward to testify to Parliament about the regulator's performance. Um, and so I'll, I'm I'm expecting to be called at least on one or two occasions to talk to the Parliament um, about. What does it take to get an investigation? But also in terms of my public analysis about ASIC, I think we're going to be covering that. But then, but then to to you know, so so, so that's a, been a major ordeal. So first off, investigating the crooks, then investigating the cops, getting an investigation into the crooks by the uh, by the cops, and then getting Parliament to investigate the cops. So that's what. So those are the two things I've been working on. But and this has been you know the last couple of years. But then to to add um, even more drama to the story is um, about a month ago or about a month and a half ago, I released a show on YouTube. It's called The Final Secret, Exposing the Australian Prime Minister. And so you can uh, view this on my YouTube channel with Martin North in the interest of the people, but also I have another YouTube channel called Public Crusader. I've also put it up there. And so this goes for about 22 minutes. And so we reveal an even bigger scandal that's happened in the last nine months, and that is that... Um, uh, during the course of this so-called criminal investigation by ASIC into these crooks, the Prime Minister has been filmed and photographed with with the people I've made criminal allegations against, and and, and he's made a number of positive statements. And so, um, whereas I obviously I want the truth to come out, and I want the police to do a professional, independent um, job to to discover what is the truth of my set of allegations. You have the head of the government, effectively the you know the president of the United States in your system, coming out and basically standing shoulder to shoulder with the people who I've told the police are the crooks, and he said these are great people. And I'm thinking to myself, well, if this was in the U.S. and whether it's Trump or Obama or Biden or Bush or whoever, if they're standing with the crooks and saying um, these are great people, what's going to happen to that investigation? Well, we can see with the Hunter Biden investigation. The investigation is going to be it's going to be dead. Washington's going to basically say, "Well, these are the president's friends. We're not going to do anything with it. It's too politically hot to even touch." And so, because of that concern, I went to the inquiry in January and made a confidential submission talking about the issues related to the prime minister. The submission was accepted at the end of March, and so now um, we have the situation of. Uh, the, the parliament is also not only looking at the performance of uh, ASIC, they're also going to be looking at this issue of has the prime minister purposely sought to interfere in a criminal investigation by endorsing said um, uh, alleged criminals? Um, um, and 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 again, you know, there's a lot of things happening in the background on this prime ministerial question. But 
but but but yeah whereas it, whereas this all stemmed from a couple of conversations in 2021 and now we've got um going after the crooks going after the cops and now the prime minister has involved himself in it's been a huge ordeal to go through all this detail and we're still trying to figure out at the end of the day uh what is the truth of what i was able to allege in the beginning and that still hasn't been resolved. And uh, whether we get a, res a resolution in 2023 or whether this is going to drag it into next year, we'll have to see. But but if, if people have been wondering what has John Adams been doing for this time, you know that 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 is in a nutshell what I've been up to. Well, that's uh, that's a mouthful, and it's uh, it's sobering to a lot of people. But you know, it also raises hope on the part of many people who have been listening to analysts, and there are some very well-respected analysts who've been talking about corruption and documenting uh, the appearance of corruption in uh, different aspects of financial markets and so on for decades. And the thought that there may be a crack in the dam here where you've actually got hard and fast evidence and you've got uh, demonstrable um, data that shows uh, laxity and, and and dereliction on the part of the investigators and then you've also sh you know can document potentially uh interference by officialdom uh all of that with the backup backing of parliament and uh, the press is uh is a is a array of hope i think for many people that maybe maybe we'll see some breakthrough do you have any idea of a timeline within which you expect there to be a potential uh breakthrough and the public may become more aware of some of the facts behind this well, well, the thing is, is that part of my problem, Dunnigan, is, is that my perspective and the perspective of my legal counsel is um, ASIC's investigation should have been able to bear fruit, um, uh, you know, uh, like they should have been able to, to figure out what was going on last year. And here we are at the end of, uh, or the, the end of May, the beginning of June, and all they can tell me is that the investigation's ongoing. And so the question uh, in the minds of, of my legal team, but also myself is, well, why is it taking so long? Um, because uh, if you were to see my 600 pages, Duncan, you would realize that you know, we told the investigators what crimes have been committed. We, we, gave, we told them all the facts. We, told, we gave them an investigation plan. We said, this is how you investigate the case. This is the, the types of evidence you have to go with you. So we, we told them everything of, of you know, who these people are, what they've done, um, what laws they've broken, how the, how the law was broken, and how to go get the evidence to actually uh, confirm our allegations. So, so given that we told them everything up front and we did all the thinking for them, it's like it was, into our mind, a very uh, a simple process to, to go pursue the case. And so, so all, all, all I know is, is that, um, that they are investigating um and they and and you know uh, all, all i can say is well at some point they will have to include the investigation by either writing to me and saying that we've we've found nothing wrong and the allegations haven't been substantiated or um or they will commence proceedings in court um and if they commence proceedings in court there'll be some sort of public announcement by the government along those lines and um yeah we, we just continue to wait so uh uh i wish i could tell you what the timeline is uh, but 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 we we don't know and so the only thing i can do in the interim is to pursue this question of whether the whether the uh, cops are actually uh doing a professional independent job and are they a high performing agency and that's the type of work i'll be pursuing with the parliament in the next six months well, we wish you the very, very best in progress in that. Please do keep us appraised of of progress in that. And uh, in that's why people who follow our channel, they're seeking sound uh, resources and sound assets and sound approaches because they're so tired of what Rafi Farber refers to as the inflation of everything, which means the the dishonesty of everything. Uh, we've interviewed James Rawls from survivalblog.com, and he talks about we're in the age of deception and betrayal. And we have been deceived 
in many ways, it appears, and we have been betrayed by those who are supposed to be watching out for us. So uh, someone like yourself who stands up as a public crusader is so welcome in a time such as this. Can you talk to us about the public crusader website that you've started and what people will find there? Sure. So, so, so yeah, so over the last few years, Dunnigan, I've pursued uh, a number of independent campaigns. So, so your listeners would have, would remember that back in 2019, 2020, um, uh, the Australian government wanted to introduce a cash transaction ban where they were going to put people in jail for using legal tender. Um, and this was at, at the $10,000 mark. So, um, there was me, Martin North and a couple of other people across Australia where we led the first YouTube driven campaign against the parliament and it took us 16 months and we were able to defeat the government and and that law was basically stopped and it was dropped so so we were the second country in the developed world behind germany to stop the implementation of a cash transaction ban so that was one of our signature campaigns that we were able to be successful there's been a number of other campaigns that i've been able to pursue over the last few years where we've got various uh, in, in terms of different results and so the current campaigns that we're working on is is what we've been talking about in terms of this interview. And so, uh, one one thing I really want to do, and again, is is that uh, and 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 you know, having been in this space for a number of years and you know, listening to you know your other guests and other people, I think I think people want two things. I mean, on the one hand, people want results. People don't want talk anymore. They want to actually see you know real results, real action. And so that's why that, that campaign on the cash ban was successful and, and so impactful. Because we could actually demonstrate to people, no, if you actually um, focus and actually apply the right strategy and approach, you can move the system. And we were able to stop Parliament from passing a law. So, so that so that was important. And obviously, I think um, even though I've been, you know people have been quite impressed with the ability to establish uh, you know an inquiry into ASIC um, and, and and to pursue ASIC, but 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 I think um, if we can really deliver in terms of this criminal investigation that I did, but also deliver in achieving meaningful reform, the regulator, I think that will, again, give people confidence that, that, um, that, you know, the you know ded- dedication and the right resources, the right approach can actually deliver real results in, in terms of the real world. So I think, I think the era of talk is over. I think people want to see, hard results. I want to be involved in delivering hard results. And so the website is really trying to document all of those uh, things that I've been working on, uh, but, but also how people can play a role in being part, part of the journey um, in terms of the current campaigns, but also in terms of some of the future campaigns that, that I've got some ideas about in terms of where I want to go. But the, but the only thing I'll say um um, and again, uh, and, and it may be a little bit contrary, is that while there are people who want to see real results in the real world, um, the thing that I've learned and appreciate the most in the last two years is um, to achieve big things um, in terms of big outcomes, they don't happen uh, quickly. It does take quite a bit of time to move the needle, um, and, 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 and that's where... Uh, in, you know, in terms of in the current world where people want instant gratification, if you say, "Hey, to deliver a really big outcome, it may be a year to two years down the track," that's when some people start to lose interest or focus. Um, but but having gone through this process, if you don't uh, see it all the way through, the chances of actually delivering the outcome are going to be quite limited. So so yeah, so so yeah, I mean so so yeah, so I think people want to see outcomes, but. Some people uh, don't appreciate what does it actually take to deliver that outcome, particularly when you're butting heads against powerful forces in the establishment who, for whatever reason, may not want the, that outcome to be achieved. Well, that's that's where I thought you were going with that. Was I thought you were going to say you not only did you you are aware that there's lots of people that want results. I think I thought you were going to say that you've d- encountered the grim reality that there's lots of people out there who are not wanting results, who are wanting to interfere with or to uh, block or to uh, basically um, ca- you know, to, to cause stumbling of those who are trying to expose the corruption. And uh, you mentioned that you've gotten on the job training here as an investigator along the way. You've always been an advocate for the people and always been willing to be outspoken, but your skill set of, of getting ramped up a very steep learning curve in a, in a very fast period of time about how to be an investigator. 
Yes, yes. I mean, one of the one of the the lucky things that I've been able to achieve, Dunnigan, is is that uh, as I've gone along this journey uh, in the last few years, I've been I've met a whole host of new people across Australia who have who come from the law enforcement investigation field. Um, and, and I've got one guy who 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 actually was one of the consultants who I used to help me put my um, package together uh, before we submitted it to ASIC last year. Um, he used to work at ASIC. He, is a, he used to be a senior investigator, one of the best corporate investigators in Australian history. He's worked on some of the biggest cases in the last 20 years. This guy knows the, the game inside out. And so he and I talk constantly multiple times a week, and he has so many stories of what actually happens during an investigation, what happens in court. How do you conduct an investigation and all the thinking that has to go into, you know, being a professional corporate cop? Um, and so I've learned so much from that one guy in particular, but I've learned so much along the journey. Um, and, and and so yeah, so so I think when we were having some of these discussions in 2018, 2019, uh, it was mainly uh, you know my skill set was uh, economic analysis, political analysis. Um, uh, and talking uh, all about that field, and th- 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 that's a huge, big field. But in the last couple of years, I've been able to learn something completely new, um, and, and the amount of things that I've been able to learn and experience has been very different. And uh, you know, compared to where I was, and I think that now, um, j- just just my ability to look at a problem from multiple different angles, whether it's just from an economic angle or a, an accounting angle or a, now a corporate fraud angle or a law enforcement angle. I think I've just been able to see a whole different side of the market um, that, that, that most investors have little to uh, zero understanding of. And I think that's just made me a more complete analyst. Speaking of that, um, you have, in order to be able to devote this kind of time and attention to this particular major uh, crusade and potential uh, breaking scandal, had exited from a lot of your direct participation in, for example, the uh, bullion uh, marketplace. But I understand you've got a new uh, path to re-entry there, and I'd like to give you a chance to tell us more about that. Sure, yes, yes. So, 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 so I, I was... Uh, with uh, a company called As Good As Gold Australia. So I was with them for four years. Um, and then I decided to exit them uh, last year for a range of reasons. And so I've largely been out of the uh, precious metals markets for about, oh, now about eight, nine, 10 months. And so um, one of the things that I'm doing uh, um, in a very short time is I'll be re entering the market. Um, so uh, I'm teaming up with uh, uh, one of my business partners from Melbourne, uh, Australia, and we're going to be um, launching a new uh, bullion service. So we'll be, you know, pretty much, you know, very similar to Miles Franklin. I'm mean, selling, buying and selling gold and silver, um, helping people acquire precious metals. Um, we, we have a, a particular um, approach that that is, I think, is going to be a little bit uh, new to. The Australian market compared to uh, approaches in the United States, and so uh, yeah, so 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 this will be largely uh, uh, you know surrounded around me. We'll be called Adams Bullion. We'll be providing precious metals, but we'll be you know, creating a number of unique products which haven't been uh, launched in the Australian market before. So we have some interesting announcements then. But but I'm definitely very keen that once we are able to close the chapter um, on this whole two-year saga that I've been involved in that uh, I'll be able to come back to, I guess, some of my bigger passions, which is economics, precious metals, um, and 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 in and, and, and terms of being able to go out there. Uh, I mean, like the last few years, I've been able to do a number of seminars uh, talking to p- people about various um, economic and political concepts. I, I, I definitely enjoy that. I'd like to get back to that. So, uh, so yeah, so, uh, so, so we are uh, we are very soon in the next couple of weeks launching our new precious metals business, and uh, we'll uh, we'll obviously see if we're able to assist people in their journey to uh, securing um, not only their financial freedom, but one of the great things I like to say about precious metals, uh, done again, is is that effectively I'm selling insurance, and what am I selling insurance against? Incompetent government. Um, and given that ten years ago I used to work in the federal parliament. I know intimately how incompetent the government is. Um, and so I have uh, direct uh, experience. 
having a former political advisor, having been a former bureaucrat, um, and and you know the direction of Australia in the last twenty years has gone completely in the wrong direction. And so um, my feeling is that now more than ever, um, a lot of Australians, but also I think people across particularly the Western world, um, uh, with, with you know with the COVID nineteen stimulus response and the inflation um, and and the inability. We, we, and, and this is something I said last year, uh, I don't think uh, central banks will be able to uh, get inflation back down to their, um, uh, their to their publicly stated targets. And so I think, uh, as I said in 2020, when the um, uh, centralised global ca- QE campaign was announced, I said we're going to have stagflation. I think the stagflation is happening now. I think it's going to get worse in the next two years. And so I think that precious metals um, will be a... Um, will be an important asset class going forward. And so uh, I definitely want to be able to help people along that journey. So that's why I'll be uh, uh, in the next couple of weeks coming back into the market and uh, and hopefully uh, people who have uh, who have been uh, supporters of mine will uh, will be you know interested to come and uh, talk to us about uh, precious metals again. Well, we're going to have to have you back because there's big topics with your passions for economics and the integrity of law. And that applies not only in Australia, but around the world, including in the US. We want to have you back to talk about some very targeted areas in those in those uh, camps and uh, want to make sure people know they can find you now and find your work at publiccrusader.com. So folks, it's in the description of this video. You can click on it there or you can just go right to it, publiccrusader.com. You'll find a lot of John's works that he's been on and he's got ongoing projects that are going to be breaking far, far farther this year uh, we hope and uh, we'll hear more about those as they develop john as always thank you for your courage and your and your willingness to fight for the right thing and fight against the wrong uh, on behalf of the people and we're grateful for your presence here on liberty and finance thank you dunnigan always for having me miles franklin precious metals is one of america's oldest and most trusted bullion dealers Miles Franklin is A-plus rated and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, licensed and bonded, and has zero complaints ever registered. Here at Liberty and Finance, we are licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. To order, simply call us, discuss your needs, and we can let you know our live inventory, prices, and availability, and lock in your order over the phone. Once your order is locked, the price is held for you regardless of market fluctuations and the metals are reserved for you awaiting your settled payment. Within one business day of ordering, you will receive an email invoice detailing the order and payment instructions. Miles Franklin accepts payments by bank wire, ACH or electronic check, money order, check mailed priority mail, and cryptocurrency. The fastest forms of payment are bank wire and cryptocurrency. Upon settled payment, metals will ship out within three to five business days you will receive tracking information via email. Domestic shipping charges are $15 for any order under 500 ounces of silver or 10 ounces of gold. For orders larger than that, domestic shipping is free. The package will be boxed, fully insured, and labeled discreetly, with no indication of the contents inside. For your privacy, the name Miles Franklin will not even be on the package. To talk to myself, Kaiser, my brother Elijah, or my father Dunnigan, Call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237.